Okay, our next presenter today will be Ali, with CEO and founder of Wishpond. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone for being here. Uh, so I'm very excited to talk to you about Wishpond. Uh, Wishpond is an all-in-one marketing platform uh, that is built for serving small businesses uh, with everything they need to grow online. So basically our mandate has been how do we democratize online growth and online customer acquisition. And I'll go through what our mandate is and the problem we solve, but a little bit of you know, high level highlights. We serve more than 4,000 customers from around the world. 70% um, of our revenue comes from the United States. Organically, we've been growing at about 30, 40% year over year. Most recent year, we grew by 40%. That had a little bit of acquisitions in it as well. Um, and you know, our margins have always been in the healthy range of 65 to 70%. And what I'm also very proud of is that we've done this all very financially responsible way. So, you know, most recent quarter that we reported, we have around $3 million of cash, which was up from 2.7 the, the, the quarter before that and up from the quarter before that. We're cash flow positive. We are uh, just a EBITDA positive. Uh, we don't need uh, external money or raise anything to be able to continue our current uh, growth trajectory. Uh, but obviously, when the market is right, we would like to accelerate our growth even beyond the 30, 40% and make it, you know, around 100% or more through acquisitions. And, and we've done some of those. And in the future, we definitely plan to do more of them as well. So the main problem in the market is that if you think about any large business, they have their own chief marketing officer. They have an army of marketing professionals, whether they're designers or copywriters or programmers. But when, it, when you think about small businesses, they don't have that. They don't have the financial resources or the time to dedicate to this or, the, uh, or, or the, the skills to be able to do this effectively. And most of the software solutions out there are silo players that only uh, take care of a small part of what these businesses need to be able to grow online. And, and because of that, small businesses, for most part, are underserved and there isn't a good solution for them out there. Um, and we're talking about millions of small businesses that, uh, that, are, that are in this category. And, and we do have a solution for that. So with Propel IQ, with Wishbone Propel IQ, what we have is an all-in-one platform that gives you everything you need to grow online. So think about it this way. Like most complex things in life, there's no silver bullet. Right? So when I talk to a small business owner and I ask them what they've done for marketing, the answer is generally something along the lines of, oh, in the past I hired an SEO agency and after a few months we, we saw we didn't get results and we canceled. And then I hired an ad agency and that didn't work. And someone told me you need to be all on social media. So I started posting on Instagram, that didn't work. But if you talk to a CMO, their response is not going to be like that. CMO of a large company would say, no, you need a framework. You need a system that works well together. You need to do a lot of different things that work together. And that's what we now bring to small businesses. An all-in-one platform that takes care of everything they need. And what's also cool is that as part of the onboarding, we take care of everything for them as well. So we do the design work, copywriting work, set everything up, the whole machinery before passing it on to them so that they, be, they have best chance of success. And this is something that is quite revolutionary. There isn't, you know, a lot of competitors that do this uh, for small businesses. So again, thinking about that growth, uh, you know, framework that businesses need, one way to think about it is for you to grow, you need to attract leads. And we have website builder, landing page builder, different campaign types. Once you've attracted those leads, you need to be able to nurture them. So we have email marketing, SMS marketing tools, shopping cart abandonment tools, and then you start closing some of these deals. Once you close them, you want to also be able to use the power of word of mouth through referral marketing and get more people and continue this uh, virtuous cycle. And that's what we bring to the table for our clients. And that has, that's what has worked for Wishbone over the years and uh, uh, what, what we bring to our clients. The other thing that is also key is that as part of making you know, democratizing online marketing and customer acquisition for small businesses, AI is a huge area of opportunity as well. But when you think about small business, they're not going to be able to necessarily go and figure out what are the best practices and innovate on that, where you see large companies, you talk to like, oh, we've 
put 100 developers all focus on AI, right? Um, so what, what are we doing in that area? We've already rolled out two products that are AI focused. One is uh, AI powered advertising platform that automatically, um, you know, uh, fine tunes the keywords and, um, and make sure that you're bidding on the right things and you get return from your ad spending. The second one that we launched very recently, I'm super excited about is an AI powered website builder. So think about this. My own wife, she runs a software company also, and she wanted to launch a new vertical. Uh, for travel and hospitality for her business. And she wanted to have a website that is just for that audience. She didn't want people to come to their uh, to her general website and get lost with that. So her option would have been to go and hire an agency, pay them thousands of dollars, wait two months, get frustrated. And, you know, that's basically what everyone does. When we launched our website builder, she, within 20 seconds, she got a website that was 80% of what she needed. All the uh, platform did was ask her two questions. What is the name of your business? What do you do? And then it created the whole, well, also select the template. And he created the whole thing in 20 seconds. And it was amazing. The images, text, everything. And then whatever she didn't like, she could just right click and say refine it, give a feedback and changes. But not only that, that 20 second, 30 second was critical, but she still needed to make certain edits to make it really hers. And all it took for her was the rest of the day using our very easy drag and drop editor that if you can move things around in a PowerPoint slide, you can also uh, use our uh, website editor. And within a day, she has something that cost her nothing and she was up and running and it was very professionally done. But we're going to continue with this. So another product, for example, we're in the works on in, in a matter of weeks we're going to roll out is an AI powered email responder. So a lot of sales teams, especially, they're very busy. They're sending emails, but a whole bunch of responses come back. Some of them say, I'm not interested, interested, send me more information. What's the pricing? Our tool will allow you to automatically fill in the response and say, okay, this is what you need to respond. And you, you don't like it? Sure, edit it. But nine out of 10 times, that response will be exactly what you need because it has learned from your past history of correspondences and more things like that. So. Um, it's an area that I'm, I'm very passionate about, and I think there's real value in, uh, you know, uh, SMB businesses being exposed to it and benefiting from it. Now, where do we fit in the general market? 95% of the marketing solutions in the market are point solutions. So on the left-hand side, there's a laser. Is that the laser? Okay. On the left-hand side, you see all of these point solutions. So you see referral candy that all they do is referral marketing. You see, you know, on bounce, all they do is landing pages and they do a good job of that. Hootsuite does social media management. Another company does CRM. Another company does website building. Again, if you think about the audience we're talking about, the SMBs, they're not going to be able to subscribe and pay for seven of these platforms, integrate them together and, and, you know, uh, and take care of your cohesive picture into all of those. They need something that works out of the box in, in an integrated fashion. And that's what this right-hand side is. So that's now way smaller number of players that are in the all-in-one uh, space. And within that, even fewer of them are in the cost-effective side that would actually work for small businesses. Some of these ones that you see on the right-hand side are built for enterprise businesses, the businesses that actually do hire an agency in addition to getting the software as well. And, and in our case, uh, you know, we, we think we have an advantage here. <clears throat> I think at the end of the day, proof is in the pudding as well, right? So you see our trajectory, you know, for several years since 2017 here. Um, every year we've delivered on our growth. Um, this year we're forecasted by the analysts to hit 26 million revenue. Uh, last year we ended the year at uh, 20 and a half million. And we grew by 40% year over year in that period. We're cash flow positive. Uh, our cash balance is strong. Um, even for air and out payments for uh, our acquisitions we've made, now we're using cash to, to uh, do that to avoid dilution. And on the right-hand side also, you see adjusted EBITDA. Uh, we went public at end of 2020. And you see 2019 and 2020, we were already profitable, um, listing publicly and having extra expenses and uh, accelerating growth. Um, we were still adjusted uh, uh, EBITDA positive, but you know, a smaller scale, 2022, it grew. And, and this year we expect that to uh, grow even further. 
and our organic growth again is 30 to 40 percent. Our customer base, as I mentioned, 71 percent of our customers are based in the United States, uh, 13 percent Canada, and the remaining 16 percent are Europe, uh, Brazil, and everywhere else in smaller numbers. 4,000 uh, 4, uh, small business clients. Um, E-commerce is a top vertical for, for us, followed by, um, you know, B2B businesses and a whole bunch of different ones. I, I think one of the things that actually is key is when you look here, you see we don't focus on just one vertical or one industry, and that is actually critically important for us. So when COVID hit back in 20, uh, was it 2020, yeah, uh, beginning of 2020, what really saved us was that some of the verticals we focus on, travel and hospitality and spas and fitness centers and all that, they got hit. But okay, we shifted our way towards e-commerce players and some of the other ones and became one of our best years. Similar to that, this is part of what really helps us be recession proof and, and be able to uh, take any turbulences quite well. Um, the other element that has been a very important element in the story of Wishbone is that we have a profitable and scalable way of growing the business. So any customer that we onboard, we spend on average $1 to get $3.5 return from them within the first year. So LTV to CAC ratio is one to three and a half. And that's important because it means that very quickly we can accelerate and add more salespeople on the team and we get that money back relatively quickly and we can scale because of that. So last year we ended the number of sales uh, people that we had at 40. This year we're forecasted to hit, you know, get that to 70 to 80 by end of the year. And that's going to be an important part of how we grow. And a lot of what we're also selling to our clients is our own experience. We're, we're good at marketing and sales, you know, and our sales engine is something that is very, methodical is almost manufacturing level precision. We have a lead generation team. They pass those leads to our SDR team, BDR team. They do the first leg of the outreach. When there's a positive response, then they book a demo with our salespeople. So our salespeople, unlike a lot of co other companies, are not doing hunting. They're not going and finding within territories. They show up, they open their calendars, they have five demos booked in the, uh, on their calendar for the day. And they're all very, very busy to the point that we are actually now booking demos one week uh, ahead of time, uh, you know, they're all booked. Um, in the past two years and change, uh, since going public, we made five acquisitions and, and they have worked really well. They have allowed us to become a far greater and more robust and more, uh, you know, integrated and all in one platform than we were when we went public. So when I was talking about all in one, well, Invigo gave us CRM functionality, call tracking functionality, Persis IQ gave us outbound sales functionality and B2B audiences. Brax gave us ad management capability, Winback gave us SMS marketing, and Viralus gave us referral marketing. And all of these by now technologically are integrated into the platform. So you go, you have a unified dashboard, all the leads, all the information are uh, fed to the same place. You have single sign-on capability. The other thing that I think is important in the acquisitions we made is all the acquisitions we made were profitable, 15 to 20% EBITDA margins. And they were all recurring revenue businesses, SaaS uh, MRR businesses. So um, it, it is high quality revenue. They fit well, there's strategic value, and we didn't overpay for any of them. So majority of these acquisitions, we made them in 2021, which was the heat of the market. And we paid anywhere from 1.1 time to 2.9 time multiple of sales. Uh, we are very responsible from uh, that point of view uh, for cap you know, capital allocation. And for acquisitions, we m want to make sure that uh, we always have margin of safety. Uh, some things can go wrong. So we want a strategic value. We want financial value. We want multiplier effect, you know, all of those things. Um, and, and going forward into the rest of the year, we plan to make more acquisitions. Some of them are smaller. And for now, we're going to use our own cash to uh, make these acquisitions. And over time, um, as our own cash, uh, free cash flow improves, then we're going to make uh, larger acquisitions. And when the stock price is higher, we might raise to do more acquisitions, but not right now. Um, when we went public, the share price was 75 cents Canadian, and it shot up. And you know, uh, it was a frothy, uh, you know, period of uh, early 2021. Um, and unfortunately, despite us having grown quite tremendously in the past two years and change, uh, stock price 
um, does not really reflect that. At this point, think about the past two years. We went from 1,700 customers to more than 4,000 businesses. We went from 7.9 million revenue to, you know, 23 million revenue run rate. Uh, we are profitable, growing fast, and the stock price is 1.1 um, time multiple of sales, something like that. So very heavily um, undervalued in my, um, uh, you know, assessment. We also have a strong insider ownership, uh, 40% uh, with my spouse and my partner's spouse and some of the senior management team members um, is even more than that. Um, and we are very careful making sure that we don't dilute um, this because, I mean, also selfishly because we're a major part of it. Um, and, and this is what I was talking about. Actually, sorry, it's not 1.1 now. It's 0.9 times multiple of sales, so uh, really heavily discounted. And some of the comparables you look at are trading at four or five times. Um, obviously, this has not been only us in this market. Small cap tech has been hit. Um, you know, but uh, I think when you look at a lot of comparables, you'll see that which one is a really high quality uh, company in those mix. The other thing that I think is key, let me see how I'm doing with time. Okay, we're good. Um, is is that we're recession resilient. And what I mean by that is a few things. One, a lot of times when there's recession, companies want to cut costs, right? And they go after different parts that they can cut spending on. But generally, you don't cancel your software subscription, especially the one that is, in our case, a cheaper alternative to what's out there. So a lot of customers who are coming to us are actually trying to reduce their, their expenditure. They don't want to have inbound marketers. They don't want to have, you know, pay for all of these subscriptions. So it is a cheaper, low-cost alternative for them as well. And they rely on the software, so they're not going to cancel that. And what I talked about earlier also is key. Because we have multiple industries that we serve, you know, recession or not, some businesses do worse than others in uh, those times. And we have the ability to shift our focus and weight to the ones that are least affected by that. Uh, there's also a lot of cross-selling opportunities between our um, companies that we've acquired. Another thing that we've done a lot of, but we're continuing to do, is also cost reduction. Because we are you know, cash flow positive and, um, and, and we're still actually cost optimizing, that means that any turbulence in the market we're not at the mercy of, you know, external parties to have to go raise and, you know, have to take whatever deal comes our way. And we generally have a low cost uh, structure. So that's basically everything I wanted to highlight, you know, to, to cover. The highlights are that Wishpon at this point is a 23 million revenue run rate company growing at uh, 30, 40 percent yearly serving 4,000 businesses. And I think what's key about that 4,000 number is that, it might sound like a large number, but you have to remember, we're talking about small businesses where there are millions of them, right? Just think about Shopify. Shopify serves two and a half million e-commerce companies. And that's just one part of the uh, SMB market. And they don't even have the whole market. So we're talking about millions of small businesses out there that are underserved. It's really a blue ocean that, are, that is not even interesting to a lot of our competitors, thankfully. And we have a profitable, scalable way with the sales engine that I showed you and the LTV to CAC ratio I showed you to onboard them. And we have a product set that is really deep and wide in terms of what it covers and, so, and answers what they need all in one place. We have a strong balance sheet um, and, and we also have a you know, long track record. You know, the financial uh, chart that I showed you, I think that says the whole story, right? Uh, we're not talking about one or two uh, good quarters. No, over time, we've also uh, shown that we're quite responsible. And um, we are quite undervalued. Uh, so um, I think actually right now we might be at all-time lows in terms of share price, uh, despite just putting out really good numbers. So I think from those points of view, anyone who is interested and sees how this can really revolutionize the market and become a household name in the coming years, might find now one of the best times to get involved with the story. Uh, and that's it. Thank you very much. Let's see how I did for time. Uh, questions? Yes, go ahead. Sure. 
so I'll, I'll try to remember all the parts and I'll repeat it for those who are tuning in. Uh, so the first part was um, what is the average deal size and stickiness of the platform? And the second part was, uh, what was the second part? Oh, in in inbound versus outbound. Yeah. Okay. So in terms of uh, the, the platform and basically, I, I mean, I, I think in terms of business model is actually important to understand how it works. So generally our price points for Propeller IQ and Wishbone is a thousand dollar setup fee and three hundred dollars a month, which is significantly lower than what you would have to pay for even the individual parts that you're getting. Plus, as part of the onboarding, we're actually doing a whole bunch of heavy lifting that you would technically have to, you know, hire an agency for. So that's what the business model is, and we sign them up on annual terms. So that also gives us a lot of stickiness. But I think, you know, the the stickiness now, especially with the launch of Propeller IQ is quite great. And the reason is great is that if you are, let's say, you know, doing an SEO, you know, push with an agency, three months later, if you don't get results, you cancel that. Okay. Now contrast that to what you get with Wishbone. Your website moves to Wishbone, if you like, and can be rebuilt using Wishbone website builder. And let's say you're a gym. Now anyone who wants to book a personal training session would use the calendar appointment booking that is Wishbone's. Anyone who wants to talk to you, the forms are Wishbone. Then you want to send them newsletters and, you know, drip campaigns. That's using Wishbone. Uh, you want to also use referral marketing and say anyone who refers someone else uh, to get a membership, they get one month free, you get one month free. That's using Wishbone, SMS marketing, all of that. Now, when you remember all of those parts being part of, you, part of what we do for you as part of Propel IQ, Canceling and ripping that apart and replacing is very difficult, right? And there's so much value built into that. So, so that really wor works well. In terms of inbound versus outbound, um, at this point, majority of our new sales is outbound. I would, you know, I, I, I don't have the exact numbers, maybe 70, 30, something like that. At some point, it was the other way. It was all inbound now, but, but outbound generally is something that um, we have more control over, right? Um, uh, so we know you add salespeople and you add the lead generation capacity and, and, and you grow that. Um, I hope that answers the questions. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So exactly. Uh, I mean, the exact churn numbers we haven't shared, but we are in the small cap. Uh, sorry, in the small business marketing tech space, we're in the leading end of it. But you know, similar to Shopify and HubSpot and all that, it's not a number that we put out. Um, but two elements that are very important in that. One is that you're right. Uh, some of the churn actually is front end loaded. So the first three months you might see more of it, and then it really tapers down. Um, and then the other part of it is that um, there's an element of lead overage fees. So, for example, the $300 package is up to 1,000 leads in your database that you can manage, contacts that you can manage. Now, we have customers that started with 300 and are paying 2,000, 2,500 a month because now they have a lot more leads. And then on top of that, some people also can go to our marketplace and say, I actually want some services as well. Can you actually run this ad campaign or SEO? And that would be cost plus that, you know, they can subscribe to. So yeah, that's, that's the base and, you know, there's more opportunity and the, the ones who've been with us longer, they end up paying us even more. Other questions? Yeah. Oh, no, we, we have actual people. Uh, so we have, you know, as of last year, we had 40 salespeople. Um, and this year, we're going to get that to 70 to 80. So no, there's definitely salespeople. But still, throughout that process, for example, let's say the lead generation, there has been a lot of optimizations and automations done um, so that we can do more with less. But no, absolutely, you need people. At the end of the day, people buy from people. So there's no replacement of that. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions? Yeah, please.
Right, 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 right. So uh, some of our competitors, for example, you might think uh, HubSpot would be one. Uh, SharpSpring, to some extent, on the marketing automation side, they don't have the, the everything that we do. Click funnels for certain elements of it. Um, I, I think in terms of functionality, HubSpot might be the more complete one that is more comparable to us. We have our strengths and they have their strengths in, in terms of product set though. And, but they are more focused on the mid tier of the market and up, like, you know, average, you know, starting price for someone who's getting their marketing platform would be $800 a month. Um, and ours starts at $300 and gives you more actually. There's, you know, you can very easily actually end up paying more. Um, so that, that would be the thing. And, and, you know, I think the other part of your question is, are new customers, where are they coming from? Are they from replacing those businesses? Sometimes, but I think what's interesting is that majority of the customers that we're going to are so underserved that they're doing nothing, basically. So they're going from, I did something in the past or nothing to, okay, all right, you know, for me to grow, I need to have a system and this is exactly what I need. Yeah. Yeah, for example, uh, you know, HubSpot would be 800 and then based on the features and functionalities, it might be more. Uh, the other thing, for example, that is also important is that let's say if you want to use HubSpot, um, you still need to hire an agency to set everything up for you and show you how to use it. With Wishbone, as part of the onboarding, we actually do all of that. We use our copywriters and designers and everything. We set everything up that would cost you, you know, six, seven thousand dollars with an agency to set up and then we pass it on to you. So from that point of view, it's also completely different. And that's why a lot of HubSpot customers end up just using it as a glorified newsletter system, you know, CRM and newsletter. Uh, in our case, that's not the case. Um, and, and then, you know, another example, ClickFunnels charges 300, but only for, um, you know, landing pages um, and, and forms, basically, and not everything else that we have that you need to be able to succeed online. It's definitely the leading SMB marketing platform out there, um, bar none. And, and, and we've also been uh, awarded by Gardner Group and, you know, other ones because of that. Um, it, it, you know, there, there is, it's very hard for anyone to compete with us. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much.